Well, it's an honor to be here with all of you, and especially with these uh, distinguished Canadians uh, around me here. Um, to follow up on Kyle's point of why we're here, the real issue is that federal leadership is essential for the future of Medicare. Canadians want Medicare. We've seen that in a poll this week. It's a top issue of concern, and yet the federal government does not want it talked about. Uh, Medicare works, it's cost effective, it's equitable, but Canadians want and need more of Medicare. And for that, we need national leadership. Even a conservative-controlled Senate committee has called for federal leadership to secure the future of Medicare. Healthcare is a shared jurisdiction. Regardless of what you hear coming from Ottawa, healthcare is a shared jurisdiction. And it will not survive without federal leadership. It will splinter into 14 different directions. Prime Minister, it's time to step up, show leadership, and begin working with all the provinces and territories on Canadians' number one concern, securing the future of health care. Quelques mots en français. Un leadership federal est essentiel pour protéger l'avenir du régime d'assurance maladie et répondre aux besoins des Canadiens en matière de soins de santé. Le régime d'assurance maladie fonctionne. Il permet de réduire les coûts. Il est plus efficace et équitable que les soins de santé à but lucratif. Les Canadiens ont besoin d'une assurance maladie élargie plutôt que rédu euh, réduite. Il est temps que le gouvernement Harper revienne à la table et travaille avec les premiers ministres pour élargir le régime d'assurance maladie en commençant par établir une assurance médicament et une stratégie de soins continus. Merci. Uh, thank you very much. The Canadian Labour Congress is pleased to join with the uh, Council of Canadians and our friends at the Canadian Health Coalition and the Canadian Doctors for Medicare to press for a commitment by these provincial premiers to secure the future of Medicare and the Canada Health Act. Our Prime Minister, uh, Stephen Harper, abrogated the federal government's responsibility to negotiate a new health accord with the provinces. For 50 years, our governments have worked together to pay for public health care. But last year, the federal finance ministers gave the, premier a take, or the premiers a take-it-or-leave-it package on money all the way through to 2024. That's not good enough, and it certainly isn't fair. We want Ottawa to remain a full partner in our health care system and negotiate with our premiers on funding. This federal government's unilateral approach towards health care is similar to many other measures announced recently. They raised the age of old age security and the guaranteed income supplement to age 67. Not good enough. This dramatic change wasn't discussed with Canadians at all. In fact, our Prime Minister made this announcement to Canadians before an audience of the world's elite in Davos, Switzerland. The government also moved to make it more difficult for unemployed Canadians to receive their unemployed insurance benefits. Again, this dramatic change was made without any consultation with Canadians. In each of these cases, pensions, employment insurance, and health care, the effect of Ottawa's actions will only serve to download those costs onto the provinces and territories. The Chrétien government did the same thing when they balanced its budget largely on the backs of Canadians. Now the Harper government is doing the same thing by reducing its role in ensuring all Canadians have access to high quality public health care services and leaving our provinces to pick up more of the costs. There's only one taxpayer, as the old saying goes. The federal government cannot wash its hands of its obligations to ensure that all provinces have the ability to finance the same high quality public health care services that all Canadians deserve and aspire to. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, um, as uh, Kyle mentioned, I'm, I'm a physician. Uh, and uh, I am representing the Canadian Doctors for Medicare, which is an organization of physicians from coast to coast to coast who have over the last number of years become increasingly concerned at the forces that are moving the Medicare system away from providing services that are needed, when they're needed, to whom they're needed, uh, and introducing the idea that you can buy your way into a different level of care or a different uh, frequency of access. 
I have a rather personal stake in this, in the sense that I'm old enough to remember when it started. I'm old enough to have practiced just as it started. In 1954, at the age of eight, I had polio, and I spent uh, months in hospital. That was in 1954, and that was in Alberta. In 1954, those of you who are historically aware will know, that's when Alberta introduced hospitalization. And because of that, my parents uh, were able to retain the farm that my great-grandmother had homesteaded. And um, my brother, as a matter of fact, still works and, and, and runs that farm. And that's a metaphor for many, many uh, people across the country, because that's why Medicare started, because people uh, lost their farms due to the capriciousness. I should also note that since the earlier part of my career, I've never seen an active case of polio. And that's because a federal program of immunization, designed at the federal level, delivered at the provincial level, essentially eradicated and has eradicated that disease. Again, another metaphor for the importance of the federal presence. Now, in 2004, there was very active uh, negotiations that designed an attempt over the last 10 years to make a difference. And as much as the privateers may want to tell you this, it has made a difference. It's made a dramatic difference in various parts of the country. It's reduced wait times by 90% for hip surgery in, uh, in, in Alberta. It's virtually wiped out uh, wait times for cataracts in Winnipeg, all on the public basis. And in fact, the privateers in Winnipeg went out of business uh, in terms of career. So there have been successes, but not enough successes. And the lessons learned are going to be lost to history if we don't have a new accord. A new accord that's coordinated uh, by the federal government and is able to capture the dreams of Canadians. Because otherwise, uh, we will in fact end up, as uh, Ken has already said, devolving into uh, uh, various uh, levels of service throughout the country. If we want to see what that future looks like, we just need to look at pharmacare. Because pharmacare, which is un, uh, and pharmaceutical regulation, which is unambiguously a federal responsibility, is the most private. It also coincidentally happens to be the greatest uh, amount of increase within the healthcare system over the last 15 years. It also is clearly the most inequitable across the country. And we can read uh, stories regularly, and we as Canadian doctors from Medicare who pride ourselves in looking for evidence, see, in fact, that inequity uh, increasingly across the country. That's not what my parents dreamt of. And I want us to keep in mind that in 1954, Alberta was not a wealthy province. And yet, my parents' generation dreamt of a national plan. And between 1954 and 1968, they worked to make that happen. We are in the danger right now of, as, um, as T.S. Eliot famously said uh, in his, uh, his poem, this is the way the world ends, this is the way the world ends, this is the way the world ends, not with a bang, but with a whimper. Substitute Medicare for that, and I think that you can understand that uh, in 1921, he was anticipating this kind of collective indifference to the welfare of one another. So if we can not come together at this time, envision what we want to do over the next 10 years together in caring for each other, then we are going to end up being a much more brutal nation. But the interesting thing is when you look at the evidence of inequity and the power of inequity and what happens when you have an inequitable society, an inequitable society is an unhealthy society, and all around the world, there's no question that statistically, the more divergence there is between the rich and the poor within a country, the lower the health status of everyone, including the wealthy is. So this isn't just a class issue. Uh, it's an issue of fairness, but it's not even an issue only of fairness. It's an issue of smartness. How often in history is the smart thing to do the wise thing to do, the fair thing to do, the right thing to do. And how often in history is 
the easy thing to do, the dumb thing to do. And we uh, run uh, a risk of that. So basically, uh, Canadian Doctors for Medicare, uh, we want to engage in the debate. We want actually to have that debate informed by evidence. And the evidence is very clear. We have the best framework and we run in danger of losing that framework, losing our ability to care for each other. And I think my parents' generation deserves better. Right on. Well, good morning. Uh, I'd like to make the point that I believe that Stephen Harper and his government have set out to deliberately remove the federal government forever from the responsibility for health care in this country. Now they couldn't do it by coming straight at Medicare because as other speakers here have said this morning, over 90% of Canadians value Medicare very highly. We want it public and we want the federal government to play a key role. Therefore, the way they have to do that is to remove funding steadily, which we know is going to take place after 2017 to the tune of $31 billion, which is going to bring the federal uh, share of Medicare down to its lowest level in history. This will mean that it will be very, very difficult to enforce the five principles of, of health care of the Canada Health Act and to assure accessible, universal care for all Canadians across the country when they travel. This means we're going to have a patchwork of different levels of care and we're going to see some provinces moving to privatization. And I believe that that has been Stephen Harper's plan since way before he was Prime Minister and it's his plan now. What you have to add to that is the trade agreements that he is negotiating with many countries around the world, particularly CETA, the Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement uh, with Europe, um, which uh, is going to, for the first time, uh, involve the provinces and uh, put a discipline, trade discipline on provinces and municipalities and therefore healthcare spending. And then it is important to know that the provinces have not carved out uh, the healthcare parts of healthcare that have any commercial, uh, any commercial uh, involvement right now. For instance, home care, long-term care, doctors, private clinics, um, and health insurance. Uh, we have a, legal, a new legal opinion that says that the provinces are not prepared, they don't understand what they're getting into, and they have not adequately protected our health care or other social programs. As well, we know that with the uh, move to um, uh, uh, coordinate with the patents of, of the European uh, drug companies, we're going to add billions of dollars to our drug costs every year. So this is a plan. The plan is to have the federal government back away from health care and to bring in trade discipline to allow not only privatization but then international um, uh, competition. And it's the end of not only uh, Canadian health care but it's the end of public health care in this country. It's a very deliberate plan. We're calling on the provinces here and the premier and the uh, first ministers not um, to allow this to happen, not to say this is fine, we'll pick up the pieces, but to turn around and say, Stephen Harper, come back to the negotiating table, you have no right unilaterally to destroy Medicare, and we're also calling on them to protect health, protect health care and other social programs in any trade agreements they're negotiating. Thank you.